This is an unboxing video of a book that I have received. So I'm just going to open it and see what is this. I know roughly what is it, but let's open and see. Okay, I have now opened the cellar tape. And a look, a book which is pink. What is this? Cambridge. This is a spiral bound. Binding, spiral binding. Hmm. A puzzle. Oh! Interstellarium Deep Sky Guide Desk Edition by Ronald Stoyan and Ove Glan. Oh, that's the book I wanted. It's an atlas. I've ordered the. This is the Deep Sky Guide. The Deep Sky Atlas I've ordered also. The guide, every page of it corresponds to a page in the atlas. So I wanted always to know how the objects look in the sky actually, because the photographs, astro photographs are really can be misleading. And I wanted to see how they actually looked objects in the sky. And if, if an observer like me draw a drawing of them, how they will look. So this is a good thing for that. Oh, lovely, look. Page after page of drawings and actual pictures. Astro photographs. Oh, I love this thing. That's the Oval Nebula. Oh. NGC 919474. Oh, M97. Oh, that's lovely. M108. And this is how it looks to the view. The good thing about this book is that it tells you... Let me just look at it and just tell you it tells you how the object will look and what aperture it will show you so it's not going like this uh, american tele telescopes and books uh, 16 inch telescope there is more four inch telescopes an eight inch telescope like a uh, normal uh, mead or uh, celestron schmidt cassie grain and then 12 inch telescope so you can see here the objects which are visible in this uh, four inch telescope the number of the open clusters for example is this amount eight inch ones is this amount and visible in 12 inch ones which is a sky watcher sky max or flex tube 12 inch or uh, 300 no 30 30p is that yeah 300 yeah 300 millimeter yeah so really good book in that the, the this is a desk edition i heard the there's a field edition. I, they were quite expensive compared to this. I paid around 50 pounds for this. The field edition, they say that if you take it to the um, somewhere that outdoors and it gets dew covered or gets wet, then you bring it home, just wipe it, it goes dry again. Uh, it's kind of plastic material. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to take these books out. out uh, practically in the dark, what's the point of having a book? You cannot really use a book in the dark. And most of these pictures have red colors in them. In the, if you use a torch, red torch, to for dark adaptation, you don't want to use other colors. You practically will not see anything. Red on red, nothing will be visible. So desk edition looks a good choice in this sense, unless I'm totally wrong. And look at that! Oh, I wanted this uh, head horse head nebula. Oh, that's the way it looks. That's the way it should be seen in the... Oh, I can see more than this actually in my telescope. This is Alnilam or Zeta Orionis. And I saw this part, this part which is barely visible. This is brighter than all of these other parts. And the nebula around it is completely visible. But this one is very tricky. You can see a lot of things, but um, like this uh, nebulosity, but uh, the dark patch with my 8 inch, I have to yet to find a very dark place, probably I can see it. I, I use a nebula filter and uh, UHC filter or ultra black, Orion ultra black. I can see hints of this nebula. And probably I've seen this, but I'm not sure that it is there yet. So that would be nice. Oh, Orion nebula and uh, trapezium. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, I would... I would <laughs> This book paid for itself, but just these two pages. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love that. I don't like these astro photos that are overexposed. They don't show you the real thing. This is the real thing you will see in the telescope. This is the real thing. This is the real deal. Oh, I'm so happy I got this. This is what you will see if you use astrophotograph. Simplest of astrophotograph will show you this part. And um, this one you only see it visually. In photographs you don't see this part. Rarely you can see it. I've done a few things and you can see this part. Uh, but usually the guests are uh, overexposed. And this is overexposed image that you see in the astrophotographs. Of course, this is a negative. A uh, positive one will show uh, background is black and the rest of it is colorful so um, in a sense having the visual sketch made by the somebody who observed at the telescope and is written what telescope they have used uh, a 14 inch telescope here they have used 200 times magnification oh i love this book that paid for it made my oh rosetta that's the way you see rosetta nebula Oh, I was uh, playing with the photograph of the Rosetta today, just uh, you know, modifying with the uh, software. Man, look at this. This is there. This is what you will see if you use the telescope of the... Oh, that's visible in 16 inch. So I don't think you can see all of that in this 18, 12 inch telescope. Well, anyway, uh, number one. Yeah. Visible in 4-inch telescope, the brightest stars surrounded by this nebulosity. And uh, Rosetta Nebula also will be visible. Yeah, you can see hint of it. Ring of faint nebulosity. So, as that's the must-have for any astronomer. I was thinking about getting the ornometry. I have the sky uh, uh, Atlas 2000. I have it. Uh, I don't need that more than that. Uh, I mean, I have also Cambridge's pocket atlas. Oh, many other atlases, little atlases. But this is something else. Also, the atlas of this comes to me, and I will show you that one when it arrives. Uh, but those books are not made by the people who actually observe the thing. This is by observers. These two guys are observers. They're, these are their own drawings. These are their own astrophotographs this is the thing you actually see in the sky it's not uh, some overexposed or uh, used a lot of expensive gizmos to just show something uh, people are not competing now this is another new snobbery that uh, how more expensive equipment you have to can take a picture of course if you're a photographer you sell it you know that's another issue but just uh, amateurs i think it's getting, getting out of hand for me this kind of simple things are are good just showing how it looks under a book so the book is amazing full of data full of lovely things look at this how it is in astro photo how you actually see this is with a hmm is it seven uh, oh it's visible in the four inch telescope you can see this in the four inch telescope that's nice but this drawing was made with a bigger telescope or oh, what i don't know what the UG means here. I have to look in the index anyway. Uh, or you can buy the book and see it for yourself. And it ends with a beautiful uh, catalog. All the NGC catalog is here. New general catalog. Oh, look at the Google clusters. Oh, I love the way that it says visible in 4 inch, visible in 8 inch, visible in 12 inch and Challenges for big telescopes, for example. Number five. This is the number five. Challenge for a big telescope. So, nice. Nice to know. Uh, I think that uh, amateur astronomy has really gone well this uh, this years. Makes it challenge for everyone because you think that, oh, everything is discovered. No, everything is not discovered. Simply because not everybody is yet <laughs> observing the sky. Not everybody is yet born. Uh, there are many things to be discovered yet. Believe me. I know it because I've discovered things. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell uh, this about the second hand. Uh, first hand book of it is £100 or more. So, yeah, damaged is written. So, 
But what damage, I don't know, is just to be here. Anyway, damage for someone, for me, is a new book, and I can use it. And this book is new, I think published 2018 or 19. Yeah, really good, really good. You can check actually the date. Ocolon, by the way, is a German publisher. Germans and French have done a lot more than English people on these things, unfortunately. It seems they are, they are more. In England, uh, um, uh, yeah, everything is a little bit, people are really not having, the, they're atomized. The society in England is really atomized. This is 2018. People are divided. They cannot really have the free time. You know, for creativity, you need free time. You need leisure. It seems in France they have leisure, in Germany they have leisure. They have that job security. Here you don't have these things. Unless you are on benefit or something, which you, practically if you are on benefit, you will not be doing much uh, uh, you know, useful things. There are a few people who are on benefit, in the YouTuber even. Um, I don't want to tell Richman Man and others probably. I don't know, Vivi in the allotment, Vivi, what Vivi did next. But it's just my guess. I'm not sure about any of this. What I'm saying is that uh, uh, we have lost creativity since we publish a lot, but not much material in this. This kind of encyclopedic works always comes from French, German uh, writers and publishers.